Hi, I rarely do a pure landscape painting, but I've been having fun including trees in some of my pictures of abandoned buildings. So I thought I'd have a try at having the tree as the main subject. This is my original reference. You might be able to guess from the irregular perimeter that it's actually two photographs that I've knitted together in Photoshop and tweaked around a bit to take out the lens distortion. On the day that I took these shots, I was actually participating in an outdoor painting event, but this point of view was in full sunlight and it was 95 degrees out, so I chose to paint something else that day. But I liked the look of this tree and its verticality and the warm light it was getting in the late afternoon sun. Now I know I want this to be a tall vertical painting and I found a frame and storage that seemed like a good format. So I planned my composition with those dimensions. Here's a crop with the dimensions of that frame. That feels pretty good. But I don't like that the ranch gate is that close to the right edge of the composition. So I'm going to perform some crude Photoshop magic and drag that section into a better place. From here, I'm going to use my normal procedure of eliminating the color in the image and reducing the values with the posterize function in Photoshop. This will give me a simple two value map of the subject and I'll be using this to transfer a drawing onto my canvas and that will provide a starting point for my painting. For anyone that's unfamiliar with this process, you might want to check out some of my other videos where I go into this in more detail. So here's the result of my first session's work. I began by drawing a simplified version of my value map during a quick session with my digital projector. You can probably tell that I've left out a tremendous amount of detail. All those little small pinpricks of light, random leaves, and the shapes in the grass in the foreground have just been omitted. I've tried to artfully convert the shapes from the photograph into simplified and pleasing shapes on the canvas. When in doubt, I leave the shapes out. Over that drawing, I've laid down some oil washes and then with a rag, wiped away the light areas. For the very small shapes where my finger is just too big, I've come in with a pointed brush and some white paint with dryer added. Two days later, after this underpainting is completely dry, I'm ready to go after it again this time with an extended palette. My first step is going to put in any color I even think I see into the dark sections. I'm not being at all careful about staying within the lines, but I am keeping the paint fairly transparent so that I can still see the underlying value map. The result, seen from a few steps back, looks like kind of a mess. But up close, I can still see where my light shapes are and I'll be recovering them now with more wiping and somewhat opaque lighter colors. While I'm doing this, I can still consult my posterized black and white image as well as my color reference. There'll be a lot of back and forth from this point on between what's evolving on the canvas and the appeal of the original photograph. I may try out some things on canvas that don't end up working out so I'll just end up painting over them. In the end, the painting has to stand on its own. It's not meant to be compared with the original photograph. And in many cases, the reality that's represented by the photograph will have elements that just don't serve the painting. In the case of this image, that might mean leaving out some of the buildings on a distant hill, some fence posts, or some awkward clusters of leaves. If they're not helping the painting, they need to be changed or they just need to go. I think in this piece, I'll also decide that this is not going to be a full value image, that instead I'll be keeping to a narrower range of values from highlights to midtones and just omit any darker darks or black because I want to convey the feeling of a very bright day. So I'm going to continue working on this painting by sending it through a number of these cycles letting it rest for a while, and then coming back at it again with a fresh outlook, washing over the darker areas and restating lights again. I'll keep doing this until I feel like some kind of balance is achieved. Right now, I think I'd like to try for a result 
that is somewhat ephemeral and suggestive. But we'll see where I end up. Again, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful to you in some way. And if you haven't already, maybe you'll hit that subscribe button. See you next time.